Parik Pramani, hope you guys are doing well. So usually we try to bring different insights and learning lessons to make you successful entrepreneur, startup, freelance, or anything you call it. The purpose is to elevate your quality of life at the end of the day. Last time we discussed about top lessons from Jewish entrepreneurs. Today we'll discuss about top five lessons to learn as a Muslim. And I will give five contexts from Quran Sharif that shows what an entrepreneur should possess, what qualities and trials and tribulations one should pass through, and what should an ideal entrepreneur be. So the first one is trusting in God's provision. And this is in reference to Surah Al-Talaq that highlights Allah's promise for the servants. So this shows that the balance between taking actions and then putting our trust on God. Sometimes we are unable to complete the puzzle. Either we do too much efforts, but then we lose the trust on God that yes, it will materialize. And we get into different negativities in life. Then we get into different recessive elements, different news around us, different pessimistic people around us. So we do one part complete. We did our homework, we did the hard work, but the other part we couldn't suffice. Or we do vice versa. We trust God a lot, but then we miss out on working hard. So working hard and then trusting God, those are the jigsaw puzzle element that Quran teaches entrepreneurs to do. That's point number one. Point number two is being an integrity and ethical business practice entrepreneur. And that reference is from Sural Matafim that shows that dishonest business practices don't take you in the long run. And that's what we have seen from successful entrepreneurs around us that if you are an ethical entrepreneur, people know you with your name. You have a credibility in the market so don't sell yourself short just because there is an instant profit in the short run uh, that can hamper your respect and fairness in the long run point number three is value creation and serving others for entrepreneurs and this is in reference to Sule Bakra which says that as an entrepreneur one should focus on building up something that benefits the society. Now you should think whatever you do, whether you work somewhere, whether you're a business person, how can you serve the society? Now, usually people try to do charity. That's okay. But this point is not related to doing charity. This point is related to whatever work you do. That work is Ibadah, that work is meditation. How will that work turn into meditation is if you start using your skill set to serve others. So let's say if somebody is a doctor giving free time for a patient makes him do Ibadah. If there is somebody a lawyer and you see somebody a distressed person who cannot afford, giving some 10% free time for the ones who cannot afford really is Ibadah. So that's Suhal Bakra thing that whatever you do in your specific circumference of the business, whether it's an IT company, whether it's XYZ, ABC, how can you benefit mankind around us? That takes your business to next level. And this is coming from who? The author of the book God. So there is no ifs and buts around it. Point number four comes from Sural Garcia, which says innovation and problem solving skills for entrepreneurs. Quran encourages us to ponder and reflect over Allah's creation and use that mindset to benefit creating innovation. Now, the problem is we have seen big unicorns. They are always developed around problem solving attitude. You see Uber, they develop, they remove the friction that was with taxi drivers, remove the middleman. You see hard.com you know realtor.com things like that they remove the middleman and hassle of buying and selling properties look at things around yourself you look at biotech product you look at healthcare products any industry that you pick the person who have made the unicorn the first mover's advantage has always done innovation and problem solving so see in your industry what are the common problems that people face and what would be the solutions that you can bring that makes you an innovative entrepreneur and then the fifth one is entrepreneurship is a journey that requires patience. So this again comes from Surah Bakara that you will be put into trials and tribulations, remain steadfast in the faces, in the facing of challenges. So you will receive challenges. Challenges are not only there when you are budding entrepreneur, when you're starting a business, you face entrepreneurship challenges even when you are at your peak. You know, sometimes business shuts down, sometimes COVID comes, sometimes the funding gets off. Sometimes you get into lawsuits, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. But those trials and tribulations are your test, whether you leave that thing or you focus well and continue. So I hope this helps you. Five entrepreneurship lessons from Islam and Quran.
Take care, stay blessed.